Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator. I guess it's kind of like a um, showcase slash tutorial thing for how to use the script that I've created and set it up. So it's not really a in-depth tutorial on how to create the system, but it will show you the basics of what the configuration and stuff are for. So over here, uh, basically these entities are in a specific group, they can be bred and we'll get a baby entity from it. Uh, the, uh, the baby entity will be a smaller entity than the one before. Now, uh, how I achieved this was through entity states. So when we actually breed it with a specific item, I honestly can't remember what I bred it with the last time. Um, let me just quickly check the code. So that would be under base and then we would have the right click uh no that's the update tick um right click event okay so i need sugar so that's what we're going to be using is some sugar and we need two of these for the breeding mechanics so as you can see uh that their ai will automatically want to come towards me when I have the sugar, this is how most mobs actually interact. So when we right click on them, you might have seen that it updated, like it tilted a little bit. That's because it just changed the model. And basically these two that were just there was a separate entity itself. And then it basically produced a smaller entity based on that. So that over time will grow up. I think it takes about 20 minutes for that to happen. Uh, these ones go back to their original state, so we can't actually breed them again um, until five minutes has passed. So uh, five minutes IRL time, then they'll be able to be bred again. That's how vanilla Minecraft mechanics work. Now, babies don't actually follow the parents. Uh, that would be a little bit more complex to actually set up, but uh, they do breed, and you do get a baby creature from it. So the best that I can actually do so okay with that being said let's review the AI settings and then we'll go into the actual procedure system all right so we should probably take a look at the base entity first uh, we'll go into the entity and we'll just quickly review the settings in the actual entity itself so you want to fill out basically uh, the texture and the model for your entity. Uh, the model will be the same as your breeding entity model. So it will be differently named. Um, your model identifier needs to be separate. So will the file name and the um, actual texture name. So all those things need to be separate from the base entity. Uh, but they need to be the same across the board. So basically, as you can see here, it says Puffle. And then the bottom one here for the PNG says Puffle. So the model before that doesn't really show. It doesn't happen to have any major purpose. It's still going to be basically like you're not going to see the file name. So there's that and the model identifier is Puffle. So there's all three Puffles right here. So that part is very important when you're modeling. I'll make sure to provide the block bench um, models so you guys are able to kind of see the settings in block bench as well. Uh, they're basically a setting or like the save for the block bench. So you'll be able to kind of review and see how the settings are set up. Okay, I'll, other than that, all the other settings are here are pretty much um, customizable. You don't need to do anything else on this page specifically. Going under AI or behavior, uh, what you might want to do, depending on what kind of creature it is, is set the uh, behavior. Uh, for example, if it's set to mob, then iron golems will try to attack it. So I have it set under creature. So maybe you want a baby entity that won't die from an island iron golem, but the parents do, then you might want to make it a creature or something like that. It's just uh, preference, but that's basically what I did just to kind of simplify it. Uh, then we have the movement speed. Uh, you don't want it generally too fast, so I would even probably say keep the movement speed about 0 0.25 across the board. Uh, though some things like baby villagers, uh, they actually run a lot faster, so you might want to set that to like 3 for babies depending on what kind of creature you're wanting. 
Uh, the health, uh, you want to keep this across the board the same. Uh, reason being, you're going to be transferring the health over uh, from one entity to another in the script. So keeping it consistent across the board is pretty important. Um, other than that, the tracking range and the um, follow range, so follow range and tracking range, I would probably keep that around 32 and 64. Uh, but everything else here is basically customizable. You don't really need these settings particular. The only one that is important is basically the health. So everything else is customizable as far as I know. Inventory. Um, generally, you don't need it. I have it just set to the default values. Uh, the procedures for the base entity is a right click on entity procedure that we'll cover in a little bit. Uh, on entity tick update and then we have on internal entity spawn which will set the default values for the entity uh, when they actually spawn in the world or switch states as well so that's basically what will be applied for the default values and then it will be carried over to the update tick uh, or on entity tick update for the actual script so if it doesn't if it's not configured by um, other mods and stuff, then it will fall to the internal entity spawn. Uh, the right click will basically allow you to start the breeding process, so that's basically that one. A task goals, uh, this is basically what it looks like. Uh, we have a follow block with speed of set of one, and then we have no conditions for that. Wandering, uh, generally want it to wander, look around, and float in water, so very basic AI tasks. Uh, for the following item, this will probably should be your breeding item as well. So you can actually have them act like more like entities. So that's basically that part. Spawning, uh, you want that enabled uh, depending on where you want it. You might want to adjust the, um, the biomes where they can spawn or certain things like that. So other than that, you can just enable it and it will work just as normal. Okay, so moving on to the other entities. So we have the breeding entity, and we'll cover the settings right now. So the breeding entity is very similar. Uh, what we're doing is we're just basically setting the model. Um, for this one, I just set the Puffle model, um, Puffle texture. Uh, we didn't really need to update per se the uh, model itself so everything's the same unless you want to add a different style then you would update these two models um, everything else basically the same thing that I said before everything else is customizable it's just these two things that are the most important and behavior uh, again I'm keeping the health at 10 that's the only thing that's really important though this can probably be set to a higher number if you want to or lower number depending on what you want the entity to kind of act like if you want it to go to the other breeding entity slower then you're going to want to um, decrease this value all right so inventory again nothing too special triggers we have two triggers for this one we have on entity tick update and on internal entity spawn so this one sets the default values again and this one like the default values for this will be different than the other ones that's why there's a separate procedure for it and then there's one for the on entity tick update that's where the script is running ai goals uh this is basically what we have for the ai goals uh, we have attack uh, nearby only and then we we're going to be targeting the same entity as the puffle breed so this is basically the same entity that we're creating right now so puffle breed is the entity that we're reviewing and then we do do melee attack com uh, melee slash combat attack with speed of factor one uh, we're just using that as basically the targeting mechanics so we can basically tell them to go to the same entity and as soon as they basically hit the entity uh, then it will basically count and give the particle effects for the hearts that's basically what that part's doing we have uh, one thing under the behavior um, we can see the uh, where is it the attack strength right here is set to zero so that's actually really important as well 
So we, we don't want it to actually hurt the entity, but we want it to actually target the entity. So we're going to set the attack strength to zero when it's in the breeding mode. Uh, this is very useful when you're using entity states because you can control all the settings separately. So that's one reason why. So going back to AI tasks, uh, what we have is just the wandering. Uh, we have with it set basically to the same system. The only difference is we're telling them uh, to set priority for the attack and do melee attack. So that will basically get the entity to target the other breeding entity. There's no conditions on any of these, so we can just basically have them do that as quick as they can. All right, and spawning, we don't want them to spawn at all. So this is only, should be, they should only spawn in the world when we're actually breeding entities. So I have this uh, entirely disabled. The last entity is one for the baby and we have a baby model. So the baby puffle is the texture that I'm using and baby puffle for the actual uh, model itself and the model identifier name is baby underscore puffle as well as the same as the name. Uh, we can keep the name the same. It doesn't really matter too much uh, what you give the name of the entity. It can be pretty much anything. Uh, though all the other settings can be customized. You might want to set the hitbox a little bit smaller than the parents. Um, this is basically measured in um, accordance to one being a full block and anything above being over one block. So if you want it to be like half a block, then you would set the height to 0 0.5 or something like that. And then it will be like a small little area that it can probably go through one block area no problem so just keeping that in mind when you're creating your hitbox um behavior we have again the health set to 10 uh, we can adjust this across all the entities to a higher number if you want to generally mobs are 20 but uh, most animals are 10 so that's fine uh, following tracking range is all the same uh, the movement speed is set to three so they'll go faster towards general walking and stuff again creature but everything else is pretty much customizable and uh, you can do whatever you want with it as long as the health is basically the same that's the most important thing uh, outside of that no inventory and triggers we have two triggers uh, internal spawn which basically sets the default values for the baby um, actual script and then we have the entity tick update so this is the script that will basically make it grow up over time so that one we'll cover in a little bit ai tasks uh we have it set to follow the entity wander around look around float in water and that one actually shouldn't really be needed so we can just delete that and it was just left in there from when i generated it i just forgot to remove it so uh, basically, those are the only things that you need is wander, look around, float in water, and have it follow the specific breeding item. Even though that you can't breed it yet, it's still how vanilla mechanics work, so you want it to kind of follow a certain item. Um, I'll save that in just a second. So, save. And then what we have is the spawning mechanics. This is basically disabled, uh, very similar to the breeding one. We only want it to happen when two of the breeding entities actually spawn or like breed together. So let's start covering the mechanics. We'll start with the default value because that will make the most sense if we go into in the order that it is in. So we'll go with a uh, basic base one and then we'll start looking at the internal um, actual script for this, the timers and stuff. So we have basically like four timers going on. Uh, we're running it on server side so it's not going to lag any clients or anything like that. Uh, all these procedures have notes so if you get stuck at any point um, there is notes explaining what they are for and basically the system of it, what values that it should be set for, etc. So, for example, if we look at the baby timer, we can see that it's 24,000. That is one day in Minecraft or 20 minutes. So, the other one over here, which is the breed timer, is basically going to set to 
600, which is 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, you'll be able to attempt to breed again. Um, the feed timer is basically, I think it controls uh, how long you can feed or something. I'll, it'll make more sense later on. And then the particle timer is set to zero as well. So th these are all the default values that it should be. Uh, when you set it up um, for the actual mechanics. It's really straightforward system. We're just using the forge data to basically do it. Obviously, this won't work on uh, fabric, but um, it will do for what we need on forge. Uh, the right click on entity. Uh, this is basically the script that will uh, update the entity for the breeding mechanics. So we're going to take a quick look at the script so we're running it on server side again and then what we're doing is we're testing if the feed timer is zero now remember the default feed timer is zero so we want to make sure that this is the consistent across the board then we want to make sure that the source entity basically the entity that is right clicking on the entity is going to be um has sugar in their main hand and then we're going to be setting a whole bunch of default value variables for what we need for the actual system. So for example, feed timer, this is set to a static number of 600. This will set it to basically five minutes in Minecraft. So uh, 20 divided by like 60 or something like that is like, or six 6,000 divided by 60 is like 20, 20 or something like that. So that would be 20 ticks. So basically that's five minutes. Um, then we're also making sure we can pass over our variables for our default values as well. This is important because it will need to carry over the script from one entity to other. Anything that needs to be updated will basically be a static number like this. After we're, we do that, what we're doing is we're testing if the player is either, or it is a player that the source entity is or server player, which is a script that's running on the server side. And then what we want to do is if they're not in creative, so any other game mode other than creative, what we want to do is set the main hand and then we're going to subtract one with our breeding item. So that basically does that part right there. Uh, the sound timer, uh, sound delay. So this basically will animate the sound for the entity basically eating so you might have heard that in the actual game basically I have it make four sounds and then we're going to delay the sound by a random value of 5 to 15 ticks each time that it basically eats so basically I'll do this four times and then delay it additionally um, a, a number extra so we're just adding the delay sound increasing it by five to 15 ticks in and basically running it as the wait timer uh, we can't actually use um, variables in here so I've just set the entity's position and that seemed to work fine and then we're just also spawning particles so every time that again the feed timer is set to zero and all this uh, what we're going to do oh pardon me we're spawning a breed entity so this is important because we need to despawn the entity next and this is where all the variables up here get put into play because we already set the variables for the current entity now we need to apply them to the entity that we just spawned which is the breed one we're testing for the breed entity and then we're going to set the breed entity um entity type to an entity variable and then we're going to use that variable across to set the values for the other entity that we just spawned in now remember that despawn entity will get rid of the other one we don't really need two of them so we can just update that once the script has had its time for the feed timer and everything it will revert back to the actual base entity uh, i should probably note that here because that's kind of important all right, so that part is the right-click procedure. Um, obviously, there's a lot going on here. I don't expect you to actually program that by hand. So I'll make sure to provide the um, all the procedures and stuff for the entities and all the states um, separately um, in or any 
actual workspace so you guys can easily just plop the code in and it'll be ready to go all you need to really do is make sure that you update the breed entity for this one right here 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 and i think that's about all that you need to do outside of you know set your breed item but that's pretty much all that you really need to do everything else is handled on the actual side but you you do need to update the um the breed entity for the uh, nearest entity part and the spawning entity part and then this script will work all right so moving on to the update tick so this is just where the timer the feed timer is basically running from so after the entity is basically fed what we want to do is we want to make sure that the feed timer is uh, if it's above zero then what we want to do is subtract that value by one and we're just going to decrease the value by one each time if it is zero less than zero what we want to do is set the default value to zero so basically um, sometimes variables set at negative one uh, by default this is just a catch to make sure that it's always at zero so um, generally when this script is actually running for the first time it should always be uh, above zero when it's actually subtracting. If it's zero, then it's going to, or below zero, then it's going to set it to zero. Again, we're running it on server side, so it doesn't lag out the clients. All right, so that, that basically consists of all three procedures. We have the internal spawn, the right click on entity, and then we have the update tick. So those are all the base entity ones. Now let's go on to the breeding mechanic ones. Uh, again, we have, three procedures here um one i believe is a global variable yeah it's a global variable uh there's a note a default note right here which basically just says this should run on a global procedure trigger called entity attacked so you can see that it's set up on entity attacked here uh we'll cover that one in just a second but we should probably take a look at the internal um variables so again what we have here is the feed timer that's set to zero breed timer is set to 600 and then the baby timer is set to 24 and then the particle timer is set to zero so this is basically the default values again we're running it on server side so everything is consistent and it doesn't lag out the client when it's actually running uh, the update tick this is basically a little bit more advanced, but what is going on is what we're doing is we're running it on server side. That's the first thing that we're doing. And then where we're going to test if the breed timer is above zero. So if it's above zero, then what we're doing is we're going to subtract it by one. If it actually gets down to zero, then we're going to pass over all the variables again, like we did in the other one. We're going to set the default value to the puffle model, not the baby puffle, but the puffle one. And we're going to despawn the current entity. Now, the puffle breed um, it should probably, why is that puffle breed? Because that's puffle, right? So this should actually be set to puffle. I don't know why it was not set to puffle. I'll just make sure I'm in the right procedure. Uh, breed, yeah, okay. So basically the, the puffle needs to target the puffle one. And we're going to reset all the variables and stuff like that that we just saved. So it basically goes ahead and um, applies the puffle entity, sets the rotation, sets the health, sets the oxygen. Uh, those are important for, you know, keeping the, the entity consistent across the other entities. And then we're basically passing over the MBT values as well. So the feed timer, breed timer, baby timer, and particle timer. So this will only run if the breed timer runs out. It wants to basically set it back to the default entity so it doesn't um, have an issue with breeding like it will run out after a certain period of time uh generally it will be set to 600 and then it will if if it will um switches back then it will be set to like 6000 so um that's basically how it works
All right, so that's basically that one. I'll make sure to include that in the new one. And then we have the breed entity attacks, which is a little bit different. We're basically testing at the beginning here. Uh, two, two major things. Uh, we need to test if the Puffle breed is the event slash target entity and the Puffle breed is the source entity. So basically if these two are attacking each other or one is attacking the other, then what we want to do is cancel out that procedure. Now that can be found always under the advanced tab. We can just cancel out that. This basically explains why we're doing that, but um, and it needs to be run on the entity attack procedure type. We're running it on server side because this needs to be done uh, basically on server side to keep it consistent. We're going to test if the particle um, timer is set to five. Now, every time that the entity attacks, this is not on a tick update. So it's not gonna run every tick. It's gonna run every time the entity tries to attack it, which is roughly a second or so for the attack time. So every time that the entity does attack, this value will increase. If it reaches five, then what will happen is all the script here will basically run. There's a lot of script. Um, there's <laughs> three entities that we actually need to update. So there's a lot going on, but it's pretty much repetitive for the first part until we get down to the BB entity. I'll cover all that. We've actually covered a lot of it already, but um, We'll start with the timer. So if the timer is uh, zero or below five, then what we want to do is we want to actually spawn the particles for both of these entities. One is for the source entity, one is for the event slash target entity. So we're just using the heart particle for this and we're spawning like five particles, nothing too ma major. In total, there's like 10 particles. So it's, it's pretty low on that scale. Then what we want to do is we want to increase the event slash target entity um, particle timer and we're increasing that by one and then what we're doing is we're setting the source entity timer particle timer to the same as the event slash target entity timer so it's consistent so that will happen every time it's below five and now it'll increase to five and then this will basically run in here so we're setting the default values for the source entity then we're going to update the source entity. We're going to spawn in the regular Puffle, despawn the entity, and set the default variables for that particular entity. Then what we're doing is we're going to do the event slash target entity. So this one will run, save the variables for the event slash target entity. Now, because this is already run and everything that we needed up here to be done, we can use the same variables again, and it will basically carry over properly. So again, we're just setting the event slash target entity and we're assigning the default variables. Now the position is going to be the nearest entity to the last known location. So we're setting the variables and then using those variables to spawn in the entity. So we'll always target that the nearest entity, which will be the one that we just spawned. So again, setting the variables. And then lastly, what we want to do is we want to spawn entity baby puffle and then we're gonna test for the baby puffle and we're gonna set the default variables for the breed feed timer, breed timer, um, baby timer and particle timer, which is all set uh, from our last iteration, which is up here. So basically this will be still stored. We can just set those variables down here without actually needing to up, like basically assign them again. So that basically covers the um, the breed mechanics. We only have one more thing that we need to cover. So that's the, breed, the baby entity. So let's cover that part. So under the baby folder, we have two procedures. We have internal entity spawn. So this sets all the default variables again and nothing fancy. It's the same thing that we've covered before. Update tick one. Uh, we have a couple things happening here. Uh, server side again. We're running, we're testing if the baby timer is greater than zero. If it is, then what we're going to do is subtract that by one. And when it gets to zero, because zero is the next option if it's uh, subtracted, what we're going to do is set the baby, um, basically the timers and stuff like that, all the variables that we needed before, 
rotation, the head rotation, variables for the script, uh, oxygen, health, position, all those things. Uh, we're going to spawn a puffle. And then what we want to do is we want to despawn the current entity. Now this needs to be puffle as well because that's the entity that we're going to be targeting. I'm, I must have missed that when I was actually testing and stuff. So basically this needs to be the same as these here. So uh, after what we're doing is we're going to apply the rotation, health, oxygen, and our variables to that entity after we despawn the baby entity model. So that's basically all there is to it. Uh, it's using a combination of the um, when the entity is attacking, it's using AI procedures, and we basically can create a system like this. Now, I will make sure to say this first is this is very advanced. Um, if you're not familiar with entities or actual AI tasks or the settings for entities or procedure system, it's probably best to actually learn that part first and get familiar with how the system works. Uh, if you watch some of my other tutorials, play around with even the workspace that I provide in the download, then you'll be able to kind of see how everything ticks properly. So again, if the workspace becomes like outdated, you can always just import it into the workspace that I provide and it will sh it should update the procedures. You just need to re-export them. So outside of that, that's all I have for today's tutorial. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. <clears throat> uh, losing my voice because I'm talking for over 20 minutes. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.